Guess what? That's me. It's not a mess as usual. Not a very spiritual thing to say, but. Assalamu alaikum. I first visited Jerusalem in 2009 as a Christian, and at that time I went to the Via Della Rosa which are the Stations of the Cross, as it's known. And I went to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, one of the most famous churches in the whole of Christianity. But I still wanted to go into one particular place, the Al-Aqsa compound. Why? Well, there were two reasons. Firstly, because children in the West Bank, where I'd been visiting, had asked me, if you go, please report back to us and tell us, are the tiles on the Dome of the Rock as blue as they look? Is it really as peaceful as they say it is? Because as Palestinian children, the chances of them getting to the capital of Palestine, East Jerusalem, were very slim to none. And the other reason was that I felt certain I was missing a big part of the faith jigsaw by being able to skirt the compound, but not go inside. But I've just got back from my first ever trip to the Alexa compound, Alhamdulillah. It was 48 hours that have changed my life again. It came as part of a three holy city tour in the holy month of Ramadan. And the chances of me getting to the holy Alexa compound after Medina and Mecca were actually really slim because as a pro-Palestine um, activist, I have some background in resisting colonial propaganda. In fact, my husband and I, we fully expected to be turned back at the crossing. And when our group arrived, barely anybody was getting in that day. All we did was we made lots and lots of du'a. Lots and lots of du'a. Hasbunallah wa nyamal wa keel. And then a miracle happened. We got to the Allenby crossing. And within minutes, my passport, well, they don't stamp it anymore. I was given a little marker saying, here's your entry ticket to Israel. Have a nice stay. Um, my husband and all the other men were kept for two hours. But then our whole group got in. You made it, guys. walking the sloping hill from the Panorama Hotel that climbs up to Lion's Gate. And there we passed two incredible churches and the Rahma Cemetery where prophets and Sahabi are buried. But we also came across our first checkpoint. Heavily armed, sneering colonial soldiers plucking people just wanting to go to Maghreb to break their fast in this kilometers wide city within a city, a city of faith and believers. But there they were at gunpoint being questioned. We walked past praying against the colonial settlers. Does this harassment mean you shouldn't go to Al-Aqsa? Al-Aqsa is actually Beit al-Maqdis, Haram al-Sharif. It is 35 acres and did you know inside it it has its own parks and there are acres of trees that you can sit underneath and the birds greet you at Fajr and they hail the coming of the night as well beautifully at iftar time Allahu Akbar you join tens of thousands of Muslims heading towards the many masjids that are on this beautiful site laughing talking discussing, praying, making dhikr, but the essence of it, it's peace. Guess what? That's me. It's not a mess as usual. Not a very spiritual thing to say, but wallahi. When you pray next to the women of Alexa and you say, free Palestine, poor Palestine, and you start crying and they hug you too because they're worried about you. You know, and they're comforting you. This is the, the quality, quality of the believers. It's quality and the reality of Sakina. I don't think we quite understand it in the rest of the world. 
we don't we've lost it we've lost it because we fill our time with rubbish and our eyes with sin and our ears with halal and it pecks 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 away at us one of the many things i really appreciated during my visit was that sisters get to pray in half of the dome of the rock masjid that's the huge masjid with the golden dome subhanallah 1400 years old, commissioned by Marwan and Umayyad uh, Caliph, subhanAllah. But the Golden Dome was actually commissioned by Suleiman the Magnificent, the Ottoman Sultan, subhanAllah. And in the center of it is a huge stone believed to be, understood to be the place where Ibrahim alayhi salam was commanded by Allah to sacrifice his son. And of course, he didn't have to do that. And that is also known as the starting place of the Prophet's Mirage journey. But again, I'll tell you, it's the people, it's the quality of the people there. So here I am in Masjid Marwan, in one of the original underneath Al-Aqsa mo mosques, which means it's really ancient. And I met these family, mashallah, coming here in Ramadan to pray. And the noor on their faces, Noreni, Noreni. <laughs> and I asked them, what is it like to live in Palestine? And they said, Baraka, Baraka. That there's so much Baraka. Uh, yeah, you have a message Ramadan for Ramadan 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 We love you too much. We love them too much. MashaAllah, may Allah bless them. The peace is only broken by stun grenades and smoke grenades and the occasional cracking of gunfire from the colonial settlers. But do the locals avoid this site? Do they say, let's stay away? We mustn't go there. I'm not taking my kids there. No, subhanAllah. This is why they are chosen to be the protectors of this holy site. Allah Ta'ala has made Palestine the place that is blessed for all peoples. And every stone cries his name and every bird sings a chorus. Back in 2009, I was doing some shopping, souvenir shopping, and I was in a rush, and it was my last day. And I'd met a young man, and he'd taken me shopping, a Palestinian. And I asked him, could you find me a Quran in English? And he ran, and he was excited, and he brought it back. He said, English Quran. And I put it in my bag. And then I thought we'd have to haggle. How much do I owe you? I knew it was a lot of money for the storekeepers, because tourists don't go there. Because they're told, did you buy anything off any Arabs? Maybe it's poison, maybe it's got bombs in it. You know, you go in the shops there and there's dust on things. They're barely scraping by, but full of gnaw. Anyway, I said to him, how much do I owe you? And he started to count and I estimated about hundred pounds, a lot of money back in 2009. And then this young Shabab looked at me and he said, oh, you don't owe me anything. Just one thing I ask. Please don't forget Palestine when you go. That's how I got my first ever copy of the Quran from a shabab on the streets of Jerusalem asking for the struggle of the people to be remembered. It's our duty to support the ongoing renovations, the structural care and the people of Al-Aqsa. The Prophet, peace upon him, said, a group from my Ummah will continue to struggle from the gates of Damascus and the area around it, and from the gates of Jerusalem and from the area around it. No deserters will harm them. They will continue to aid one another in the way of truth until the day of resurrection.